Hi everyone, welcome to Man with Demon. Please don't forget to subscribe, enjoy the video. The scene unfolded with a view of a girl and man sitting on bed. The man started to open her shirt's buttons. After opening all her buttons, he said, all done. Meanwhile, the girl in her thoughts said, how did I allow myself to grow south close with this man? She telling her past said, the husband I was forced to marry to protect my kingdom, the slave who seized the crown of the emperor and waged war across the world. The same man who would kill M.Y. family and destroy my home. However, a second chance is now given to us. Once everything is taken care of, I would like to share my secrets with him. She kissing the man said, would that this moment could last forever. While kissing each other the man asked Kanach, Eusebia. He said, whenever I look into your eyes, what we shared that day springs back to life. Tell me, has our promise truly faded from your memory? Meanwhile she touching a flower said, oh, I know this flower. She said, you can find it in the north as well. The man asked, really? She replied, yes. You'll see once we're in RKA. We'll spend the day reading in the gardens, fasting on sweets. Would you like that? The boy replied, yes, princess. Suddenly we get to know that it was all her imagination and she said, that would make me very happy. In the next scene we saw, RKA, home to the arcane arts. Once, it was a mighty nation of arcanists whose progenies lived and breathed magic. But when mankind was stripped of this blessing, RKA lost its glory and diminished into a weak shadow of its former self. Left at the mercy of greater powers, the nation pinned its hopes on its only means of survival, a marriage alliance. Meanwhile, a golden-haired boy appears. He opens the door and shouts, Tell me it's not true. He was Xander Catterall, second prince of RKA. He said, It's not too late to reconsider, sister. Meanwhile, Dietrich Catterall, first prince of RKA interrupts him and asks her to keep his voice down while a lady was sitting on the chair. He said, this is hardly a subject for outside ears. The second prince replied, no, preposterous is what this is. You would force your own sister into becoming the wife of Kanach Riadin? She clenched her cloths. He continued, have, have you any idea what sort of things are whispered behind our backs out there? They say RKA has purchased a coward's peace by whoring out her princess to the empire. A royal plaything for the bloodthirsty tyrant who slaughters dozens of lives a day for sport. He shouts, why brother, why? The lady named Eusebia Catterall, first princess of RKA said, Xander. That's quite enough. The second prince said, Bia, with a sadness on his face. She replied, it was I, not Dietrich who wanted this marriage. She said, I acted of my own accord, and I'd rather we moved on. The second prince wants to say something, but she interrupts him and said, I'll be fine. He started crying and said to her, I don't understand. She replied, from now on, it is your duty to look after our father. Try to be a good boy and listen to Dietrich. He holds her tightly and started crying. She said to him, but most importantly, Take good care of yourself. The first prince standing there see them and said to her, Thank you, Eusebia. He said to her, The people of RKA owe their lives to you. She in her thoughts said, I have always known that a marriage of love is a luxury for any woman born into royalty. In the next scene we saw Thea marriage. Someone said, This union is Arcea's sole salvation in the face of Riadin's growing threat. She said to herself, I need not mourn my fate. I should feel honored to give myself to such a cause. She was dressed as a bride in a white dress. The father said, Eusebia Catterall, do you take this man, Kanach Riadin, to be your lawfully wedded husband? She said, I do. Meanwhile seeing him, she said in her thoughts, so this is the emperor of Riadin. The father said, then in the name of the goddess Vihar, gatekeeper of the beginning and the end, I hereby pronounce you man and wife. Let the kiss of vow seal your bond as one. He removes cloth from her face and asks her to close her eyes in a cold tone. And then they kissed each other. Kanach asked her, are you right? She touching her lips replied, ah, 
She glanced at him and thought, Now that we've exchanged the kiss of vow, there really is no turning back. Starting today, this man is my husband. Kanach leading others on his horse rise his sword and shouts, form ranks and prepare for departure. His servants replied, Yes, your majesty. Meanwhile Eusebius sitting inside the royal vehicle thoughts, even the wedding feast was rushed. It's as if I'm being snatched away as a hostage. Though it's understandable, given the circumstances. After all, Riadin has only just emerged as an empire, so the emperor shouldn't be away for too long. She thought, perhaps he's a man who prioritizes matters of the stage over his own. Although the rumors surrounding him all label him a butcher and a tyrant. She opens the window and see outside, she seeing him thoughts, seeing him up close, there is something almost gold-like about him. A quick appeal. I have found that 96% of you guys just watch my videos and don't subscribe. These videos takes days to make. Please subscribe to the channel to show some support. It's plain to see that he inspires respect in those around him, unlike a sheltered princess like me who has no real experience of the world. Compared to him, I am. She explaining her role said, as the ruling house of RKA, the Catteril bloodline has received the blessing of the Arjunwood. In every generation, a Catteril awakens to harness the primordial magic that flows deep within the earth, protecting the realm as her guardian. She opens her hand and some sort of lightning particles appears and she said, I am supposed to fulfill the role this generation, she closed her hand again and said, but the feeble trickle of magic I possess is far from enough. She calling herself a failure said, can a failure like myself withstand the weight of the Empress Consort's title? She bowing her head down said, perhaps, I will be cast out once the Emperor grows bored of me. Pathetic Eusebia. Meanwhile traveling through woods someone wearing black dress appears behind the trees. That person do some kind of magic and make a magical ball. Eusebia noticed that person and said, Hmm? What was that between the trees? Meanwhile a magical arrow comes towards her and hit her. Kanach turns back and asked, What happened? His servants replied, An arrow, your majesty. The carriage has been attacked. Kanach asked, What about the empress? Is she unharmed? Meanwhile the arrow hits her, and she gets covered with blood. Dietrich, Prince of RKA terrified about the safety of his kingdom. Dietrich convinces his sister Eusebia to marry in order to save his kingdom. Eusebia trembling with fear and said, I don't wish to go to Riadin or marry that horrible man. Eusebia again shiver with fear and said, Please, brother. There must be another way to save our kingdom because... Just the thought of it fills me with dread. Dietrich despairly said it pains me to see you suffer so. Dear Eusebia, But what else can we possibly do at this point? RKA is dying. We have no recourse against the might of Riadin. Our fighting force are depleted. Our coffers are empty and we lack the territories to serve as our backbone. If only we had a wielder of supreme magic to protect us. Just as in times past, Dietrich said with sadness, Alas, this is our reality now. We must do what we can to survive. Suddenly, Eusebia struck by an arrow then she thought his brother Dietrich was right. Eusebia lost her consciousness. The thoughts revolves in her mind that, Had I possessed enough power to stand as Arcea's guardian? Had I been more useful for our people? This would have never come to pass. A trembling void touched Eusebia ear. Open your eyes, Eusebia. Empress. Empress. Eusebia recovered her sense, and she saw her body was in Dietrich's arms. Eusebia shocked that's me? She feels. She has died. There is her soul to see her body stuck by an arrow. Eusebia saw Dietrich hold her dead body in his arms and bland to himself by saying that. It was foolishness to put my trust in these northerners' dog. I should never have agreed to play with their little game. Eusebia's soul shouting. No. 
Dietrich angrily said the alliance is null and void. Arkara shall pay for this betrayal with blood, Eusebia S. Soul said. No, wait. Eusebia Soul feeling hurts. It feels as though being torn apart. Her soul feel the footsteps of Dietrich and said no. Why won't my legs move? At this rate, RKA will face destruction. Dietrich return home with all haste and prepare for war. The assassin said, at long last, the plan comes to bear fruit this day. Your Highness must be pleased. Dietrich said, need I say it? He said, ha, to be finally rid of that nuisance. I would say, pleased, is an understatement. Eusebius soul said, what? Dietrich said, shame. I would have liked to confirm her death myself. The assassin said, rest assured, my prince. He said, the arrow struck true and pierced the heart. Death is certain. She hearing this gets shocked. Dietrich said to assassin, bear in mind that his does not conclude our bargain. I allow you to deal with my sister as you saw fit. Only because you promised me the power to bring Riadin to hell. The assassin said, then may it please your highness to know that the impending war shall end with Arcea's triumph. Under the reign of King Dietrich, Arcea shall rise anew as an empire that spans across the entire continent. He stepping forward said, In any case, tis unfortunate that Kanach decided to take Eusebia's body with him. The girl was born a mage, so her corpse would have proven useful. He said, Truly a shame indeed. Eusebia's soul said, How? Why? As the hooded figure promised, a bitter war soon ensued between Arkea and Riadin. As for me, I became a ghost trapped in the woods where I was killed. I was in hell, or so I believed. There was no better explanation for the tragedy I was forced to witness. She was standing in war seeing someone shouting, to the surgeon's tent, Hurry! And watch I did, unable to help, unable to make any difference. Ah! Ah! The war has showed no signs of ending. Accusing Riadin of assassinating a princess of Arkea, my brother sought to win the war by rallying the other outraged northern kingdom under his banner. It did not take long for Kanach to crush them. He seized triumph after triumph, sending Arkea ever close to doom. Everything lost its meaning in the wake of war. The forests and flower fields of my beautiful Arkea. The people whom I loved above all else. No. Xander. All of them faded away before my eyes, their cold. Lifeless bodies a cruel mockery of my undeath. Three years into the war, Dietrich was taken hostage and brought before Emperor Kanach. Death. Death. Ugh. Foul, filthy slave. Dietrich said, you may have killed my fami and plundered this noble land, but do not think that you have one. This curse of House Catterall shall hunt you to the end of time. Kanach replied, I see. Then I pray you do not rest your raving, King of Arkea. Not even in death, so I may follow your screams and slay you once again. Orders, your majesty? Must you ask? Kanach said, feed them to the fire. Eusebia said, brother. Is this what you wanted? Was your ambition worth sacrificing the lives of your sister and father? Suddenly she starts laughing and said, ha ha ha. She watching towards sky said, hear me, O Arjunwood. Then she started crying and said, Hear my cries and bestow your grace upon me. Take my soul and grant another chance for your RKA. She shouts while crying, Lend me your help so I may start over and prevent all of this from happening. Meanwhile someone said, Eusebia. And she gets shocked. A flash of light appears and someone said, My dear child. The Eusebia opens her eyes on her bed and said, Was that the Arjun Wood? Meanwhile her father and brother was standing beside her bed and watching her. Her father and brother seeing her awake gets happy and his father shouts, Eusebia. Her brother said, Biae. She blink her eyes and gets confused. She said, Father? Xander. How? Meanwhile Xander hugs her. She's sitting on bed with Xander thoughts. This still doesn't feel real. 
She thought, I saw them with my own eyes. Corpses sprawled on the ground dead stares into nothingness. Meanwhile her father standing with Dr. coughed and said to him, The princess suffered through the night. Are you sure this is just a side effect of the awakening? Seeing them you see be a thought, and yet here they are, alive and breathing. The doctor replied, There is no mistake, your majesty. The princess's eyes and hair have changed colors. We believe this to be proof of a chosen guardian. However, such a phenomenon has not been observed for the last 100 years and we know little else about the matter. She thoughts, awakening? She watching her hands said, I was 10 when I awakened to the magic within me. Have I been transported back through time? She shakes her head and said, but that doesn't make any sense. I must just be losing my sanity after that ordeal. This is no more than the hallucination of what they deranged mind. Xander seeing her said to her, I don't want you to fall sick, Bia. You have to be with us for as long as you can. She touches his face and said, He's warm this isn't a dream or a hallucination. She started crying and Xander asked, Bia? Eusebia with tears on her face said, The Arjunwood truly answered my prayers. She suddenly hugs Xander. She said, Thank you for giving me another chance. Meanwhile his father and doctor gets confused. She said, I will not squander it, I promise. Her father comes and places his hand on her back. She with tears in her eyes said, This time, I will protect my family and my kingdom, no matter the cost. In the next scene Eusebia was sitting holding a flower pot and thought, To achieve that, though, I need power. She seeing the flower pot said, The greatest power in the history of the guardians. The Arjunwood, patron deity of Arcea. In life she was a human sister to the goddess Vihar. After her death, however, she was reborn as a great silver tree in the forest at the edge of the world which served as her grave. With their kingdom bordering this hallowed ground, the people of Arcea came to worship and revered the Arjunwood, and the forest in turn bestowed her gaze upon them. Those blessed by the Arjunwood became guardians of Arcea, heroes that protected the people against every disaster and enemy. But gone are the days of Arcea's glory. And the blessing of the Arjunwood has now faded with the disappearance of magic from the realm of men. When no guardians left to safeguard the kingdom, Arcea soon found itself on the brink of total collapse. My awakening was a single layer of hope for my displaying people. Felicitations, Princess. A guardian walks among us once again. I was the light and treasure of the realm. She seemed the flower pot thoughts until they discovered that I could not make use of my magic the way they wanted. The entirety of my power as a guardian was the ability to talk to trees and flowers. Perhaps something went wrong with my awakening. I'm a failure as a guardian. That's not true, Yusibia. We would not have become friends like this if you have not hadn't awakened to your magic. I'm glad that you were the one. Trees were gentle and kind. But kindness alone was not enough against the contempt of so many people. In my previous life I could only watch helplessly as Arcea faced doom, and but things are different now. She touches the flower pot and a light appears from her hands. She said, the Arjunwood would not have granted my wish without giving me the power to change the past. Meanwhile a light appears from the flower pot and she gets shocked seeing it. Suddenly a green plant grow out from the flower pot. She seeing a thought, is that it? She gets nervous and thought, I suppose I was hoping for something more, impressive. But why did the Arjunwood bring me back to life if I can have the powers I need? She said, I do feel that the magic within me is stronger. She watching her hands said, but it's far from enough. To save RKA from Kanach. Meanwhile someone knocked on the door and she gets shocked. Someone said, hello Eusebia. She turns towards the door. Her older brother was standing there folding her arms. She saw him and said, brother. He comes towards her and she rise from the chair. He said to Eusebia, I heard about your awakening. He with a smile said, which involved a great deal of pain from what I've been told. What a shame. 
He holds her from her neck and said the girl was a mage, so her corpse would have proven useful. She moves his hand away by pushing it, and he gets shocked. He said, Eusebia? She standing in front of him said, I'm sorry, Dietrich. I, I still fell sick. She said to him, I'm not at my best at the moment. You understand, don't you? His brother with a smile replied, of course. You must be exhausted. He held her hand and said, I hope you recover quickly so we can have you back with us. She thoughts in her mind, everything he says feels like deceit. I wonder if it's because he showed his true colors in my previous life. She said to him, could you please let go of my hands? He still holding her hand said to her, it hurts me to bring you this bad news when you're feeling so vulnerable. She asked him about the news saying, what do you mean? What news? He with a smile on his face replied, Rather than celebrate our newfound guardian of RKA, there are many who have chosen to question the infinite wisdom of the Arjunwood. He said they've dared to doubt the magical prowess of our new guardian princess. She after hearing this gets shocked. She shouts that's. Her brother interrupts her and said I, for one, do not care for Theer blasphemy in the slightest. Your awakening was a true miracle. Of that, there is no doubt. He said, but you know what they say. Where there's smoke, there's fire. She gets shocked after hearing her brother's words. Her brother with a smile on his face continue his words saying, perhaps the people are simply desperate for Thea long-awaited guardian to show them the full extent of her powers. She replied, but I. He interrupts her again and said holding her hands, no need to blame yourself, Eusebia. We are the bad ones to expect so much from a girl so helpless. She hearing this gets remember some time and said in her thoughts, Wait, I remember this. The tone of his words and that look on his face. She gets a flashback when she goes to her brother to tell him about her magic. She rushed towards his brother and said, Dietrich, I can use magic now. She comes to him and said, I talked with the flowers in the garden. They showed me their beautiful memories. They were so pretty. Could this be a special sort of magic? I can't wait to find out what more I can do. His brother turns towards her and replied, Oh, my dear sister. To the people out there, this so-called magic of yours would be no more than a cheap parlor trick. How disappointed would our subjects be to learn that the power of their princess ends at prattling with weeds and leaves? She gets sad hearing this. Her brother said, That is why you must never let anyone find out about your powers. I will protect you, sister. The people out there will laugh at you and they will say, Is the princess yet to show her powers? And here I thought she was a guardian. Perhaps what she received is a curse, not a blessing. He said, You need not do a thing. Just stay in New York my side and trust in your brother. Meanwhile coming back to the present she stagger and covers her face with her hand. His brother asks, What's wrong? She suddenly feels something and said, I... Meanwhile her bad self appears and said holding her shoulders, Look at you. Still so weak. How could someone like you possibly protect RKA and exact justice? You can do nothing. She thoughts this. She holding her head thoughts, This is all just in my head. Meanwhile her bad self said, The Arjunwood did not choose you. Your God merely wanted to watch you suffer all over again. She said no. Suddenly she swings her arm and said, No. Her brother seeing her gets confused. He said to her, Eusebia? Are you really all right? She replied, I'm fine. She thought, I have to go to the Arjunwood. I don't know whether this was simply the caprice of a divine being, but I will find out what she wants from me if it's the last thing I do. He feels the intensity of weather and said, We should head back. Princess, Staying in such a cold, frightening weather. Not to be safe. There can be trail for going forward. It's not safe to be outside in this blizzard. The weather is too cold, princess. Not yet. Eusebius said I cannot turn back yet. Weather cannot stop me to reach my destination. Eusebius courteously said that I will go to my destination by facing such troubling weacher. Finally, Eusebia meets her father. 
She feels pain when Sha saw her father in such dying condition. The father saw Eusebia and said her by coughing. What do you mean, Eusebia? You wish to enter the Wickwoods? Eusebia sadly looking at her father and said, Yes, father. Now that I have awakened, I feel I must present myself to the Asian wood. Eusebia's father said to her that, My sweet daughter none but the monarch of RKA entered the presences of the Arjun wood. Hyagang said only the king are allowed but a single audience throughout our lives. The Arjun wood is infinitely merciful. And yet, she can be as stern and fierce as a snowstorm. Once, I knelt on her hallowed ground and implored her to raise her mother from death. But she refused to grant my wish no matter how fervently I prayed. The resurrection of the dead, she said, runs counter to the will of the goddess Fihar. In the end I was left with nothing but grief and an ailing body damaged by the biting chill of those dread woods. Should something happen to you there? Eusebia said not to worry, Father. I promise I will turn back if the blizzard worsens. I am the guardian of RKA and the princess of the Arjun Woods, chosen bloodline. Our goddess will not spurn me. I know it. She will tell me what to do to save our kingdom. Perhaps, perhaps, it is the Arjunwood herself that is calling out to you. He said to Eusebia, take this with you. Eusebia said to her father, what is this? A heat-preserving pendant crafted by the dwarves. I had it procured for Ross and long ago. For your mother. May it serve you well. Eusebia take it from her father and said, The pendant. It's shielding me from the cold. You see be a whisper. Thank you, Father. I don't want to lose my loved ones again. I must do whatever it takes to change my fate and save everyone. There's only one way to left now. Your Highness? I may not have enough magic, but I still remember how to put it to use. Eusebia said I'll use the only ability I have and commune directly with the trees in the forest. Can anyone hear me? Let me know if you can hear my voice. I wish to seek an audience with the Arjunwood. I beg you. Grant me entry into the forest. Boy said. The blizzard. It's subsiding. Eusebia said it seems that the Arjunwood has answered me. Eusebia said to the boys. You two stay here and wait for my return. Eusebia said it's so much colder in the woods. I can feel the cold right down to my bones. Eusebia feels a voice as someone saying her name. Eusebia. My child. Eusebia saw silver leaves. It's the Argent Wood. So we meet once again. What brings me to you this time? Eusebia recalled same words. This time? Eusebia feels that she has heard this voice before. She thought that it's the same voice I heard as I traveled back through time. Eusebia said to Arjunwood that, O great Arjunwood ever watchful goddess of RKA, if I may ask for what divine purpose have I been brought back to life? Eusebia said with hopefully that, What must I do to avoid the outcome I fear? Goddess of RKA replied her that, I have already pledged my soul to you before. I am prepared to uphold that promise. Eusebia said that, but I beseech you. Grant me power so I defend and protect my people. In return I shall to be the instrument of your will. Godus said you seem to have misled yourself. While it is true that I have been watching you all this time, I have never answered your prayers. That privilege is reserved for monarchs of RKA alone. You know this. I do but but I am certain it was your voice that brought me back. I thought I was brought back to do your work. Go home, Eusebia. Your moral body is much too frail to withstand the biting chill of these wuda. Your dwarven pendant will not last long with this forest. Go home before you share your father's fate. Eusebia became sad and said, I don't care. I had rather perish Hera than watch everyone I love die in the war. 
without being able to stop it. Goddess said her, O oh, Eusebia, Eusebia requested again again, Please, let me protect them this time. Let me save Archaea with my own hands. Tell me what I need to do. Jidas said her if that is your resolve. You leave me no choice. Though you were a guardian, your magic was weak. Because I no longer had enough power to share. Eusebia thought that. Thus, I am partly to blame for the pain you suffered in your previous life. Godus said I have decided to share with you what is left of my life force. Perhaps you may defy fate and change Arcea's future yet. Eusebia shocked and asked that. Your life force. She thought she cannot be trusted. There is nothing to stop you now. What could someone like you possibly accomplish? Eusebia said to herself, follow your heart this time and succeed. Godus said by consoling her taught you are fated to die a miserable death again. Just as in your previous life. Not this time. Eusebia said if Todd is my fatab. Then so bite. But. Eusebia raised her body and said loudly I am done cowering in fear. In the other hand. Guards slept and captain slaked out of it and said do your duty. Captain said him. Have you lost your mind? Garf awake quickly and said, Ah, S. Sorry, sir. Captain said, Don't lose your focus just because things have quieted down lately. You are a border guard. Guard said, I see nothing gets past. You. By seeing you, Sibia, he said, Why, your highness? Blessing of Fihar upon you and Arkaye. They walked through Border's gate and he said to her, We've had far fewer casualties since you began watching over the borders. Eusebia replied, Well, I'm glad I could help. He said, Help is an understatement. The brambles you conjured on the walls have already doubled in their defensive capabilities, and the arrows and shields you crafted proved effective even against monsters. He said to her, Forgive me if I'm speaking out of turn but I cannot help but feel a sense of camaraderie with you. It's as though we've been through we've been through a war together. She smiled hearing it and replied, War, you say. She turns and said, You're more perceptive than you seem. He gets confused. She recalled a moment when she was sent back through time. She said, Ten years have passed since I was sent back through time. A servant asked her, You should retire, princess. It's getting quite late. Eusebia reading something replied, just a little more. I still need to finish this. She said, the Arjunwood's boon strengthened my magic, and over time, I gained the ability to accelerate and alter the growth of plants. She thoughts, walls and dense woodlands can keep monsters away from our borders. Magic-infused arrows would be helpful too. Meanwhile blood started from her mouth and felt on book. She wipes her face and said, we can't afford to be lax. Even in this life, I still hear disturbing news about Riadin and its Emperor Kanach. They're expanding far too fast. At this rate, we'll be seeing their soldiers on our doorsteps before long. Our military has improved under my lead, but we're still too weak to face Kanach and the Empire head on. I won't give up. I won't let him destroy RKA this time. I will do anything to protect my country. Meanwhile back in future a guard rushed towards them and shouts, Urgent news, your highness. A message arrived from the empire. From Kanach Riadin himself. She hearing this gets serious and thought, Even if that means I'll have to marry the man. Meanwhile a man starts reading Kanach's letter, I have only one demand your princess. You may keep the rest. The man said, That's the entirety of the message. A man furiously shouts, to ask for the hand of the princess in such a manner. Has he no shame? The second man sitting next to him said, That savage will not have Princess Eusebia. Meanwhile she holding a cup thought, These are the same people who readily surrendered me to Kanach in my previous life, and now they're defending me because they know I'm useful. She thoughts, The only thing that hasn't changed from the past is Kanach's demand. 
he, the slave who broke his fetters to rise as an emperor. His struggles could have been just as tough, or even more degrading, than the life I had to endure. I wonder if that's what made him into such a cruel and ruthless man. She thoughts, that's none of my concern, though. Her brother said, then what do you suggest, my lords? Do you truly believe that we stand a chance against the might of Riedin forces? Lord shouts, Your Highness. Dietrich continue his words saying, Nothing pains a brother more than to send his lovely little sister to the land of savages. He said, But as the crown prince of RKA, I must think of our nation first. Meanwhile Eusebia standing there hearing her brother's speech thought, Pretty words. You just want to get rid of me. Meanwhile her brother asked her, you understand, don't you, Eusebia? You are the guardian of RKA, after all. Eusebia smiled and replied, Of course, Dietrich. She said, I have been waiting for this opportunity all my life. One week later, Dietrich comes in Eusebia's room and said, Congratulations, Eusebia. She sitting on a chair asked him, What brings you here at this hour? He replied, Must you be so cold? I only wanted to say my farewell before you leave for Riedin tomorrow. He said to Eusebia, We won't be seeing each other for a while. Be gentler to your family. She turns her face other side and replied, I'd rather we kept this brief. Dietrich throw a blue necklace in front of her and said, Here. Eusebia picks the necklace and said, A necklace? Dietrich said, Not just any necklace. I see you are yet to refine your tastes. He tells, it's a sending crystal. The enchantment on it allows long-range communication. Take it with you to Riordan. He smirks and said, and report to me what you learn of Kanach during your stay there. Hearing this she gets confused. She asked him, you want me to spy on him? But why? I thought this was a marriage alliance. He replied, in name only. A perfect way of buying time until we get what we want from them. She gets shocked hearing his brother's words and said, This won't end well if Kanach ever finds out. It could cause a war. He smiled and said, Could? Oh, my sweet, naive sister. We are preparing for war. That's why I have come to see you tonight. She gets shocked and said, Preparing for war? Dietrich said, We will strike the moment Riordan lets its guard down. All the kingdoms of the north have already forged an accord. Besides, there is another ally who supports my cause, an ally with powers beyond imagination. He clenched his hand and said, With enough preparation, slaying Kanach would be a simple enough task. She squeezed the necklace and thought, An ally with powers beyond imagination? Why didn't I realize it sooner? Dietrich couldn't have gotten his hands on a magical item this rare. Without a powerful sorcerer crafting one for him. He must have joined hands with that hooded figure again. Another League of Northern Kingdoms, another great war that will throw the continent into chaos. Dietrich noticed her silence and asked, Well, say something. She still lost in her thoughts said, If I refuse him here, he'll go for the next available alternative causing a war by having me assassinated. She thought, Is there no way to prevent fate from repeating itself? I thought my efforts were enough to stop Dietrich in the war, but we are doomed to repeat the same future after all. Dietrich said to Eusebia, Tell me, Eusebia, did you possibly think that marrying Kanach would solve all our problems and bring lasting peace to RKA? He turns his head and said, Piteous fool, I had no idea you were this blind. Eusebia asked, What do you mean? She slams her hand on the table and Dietrich showing her some papers said there, Read them. Secret documents I brought just for you. He said, Guardians of RKA are cursed to remain barren for life. Becoming a guardian means dedicating your entire being to the Arjunwood service. You will be unable to use your powers outside of our kingdom, and there will be no hope of passing your magic onto a child of your womb. Your body, my dear Eusebia, lost its ability to procreate the moment the Arjunwood choose you. She hearing all this gets shocked and said, Lies? Dietrich tells him, it's true. I found those secret documents hidden deep in the forbidden archives that only the king of RKA may enter. He said to her while she was in a shock hearing this, 
Imagine Kanacha's rage and disappointment should he discover that the bride he purchased with an alliance is a barren woman who cannot give him any heirs. Dietrich holds her shoulder and whisper, the fire of his anger will burn our beloved RKA down to ashes. She gets shocked and pushing Dietrich back she shouts, lies. I will hear no more. He calms her and holding her shoulders said to her, think about it. For all the wealth of information available on guardians, not one name of their children is mentioned in the chronicles. She said, I don't believe you. It can't be true. Dietrich said, but what if it is? Must I watch silently as the end comes for us all? Meanwhile changing scenes we saw Kanach having a bath in Diana Pond. His servant holding his cloth said, they ambushed us the moment we crossed the border. Well, a prey without armor is an easy target, your majesty. I'm not surprised these assassins chose to strike. He turns back and moves his hand towards the servant saying, shut up and just give me my clothes. He said to his servant, one needs to look clean and fresh before receiving a princess. In the next scene we saw Eusebia and her lady servant. Her servant asked her, it's rather chilly, princess. You could catch a cold if you stay outside much longer. Eusebia replied, I just need some fresh air. Her servant making her hairs said, It worries me to see you looking so pale on your wedding day. Did you have trouble sleeping last night? Eusebia remained silent. Meanwhile she thoughts, last night after Dietrich left. She recalls the moment Dietrich and she shared last night. Dietrich said to her, well then, take the time you need to think about it. After he leaves she started to read about what he said to her. She said, hi, I spent the night scouring through the chronicles of RKA. She said, so it's true, not a single time mentioned anything about the descendants of the guardians. Children of mages inherit the ability to use magic. That's probably why Kanach wants to marry me, to produce an heir who can harness magic. Guardians, however, are different from natural-born mages. Our magic is a blessing given by the Arjunwood upon selection not at birth. She thoughts, Dietrich was right. Guardians cannot have children. I cannot have children. She get worried about Kanach's reaction after knowing that she is barren, she said, what should I do now? The emperor might break the alliance should he learn that I am barren. Meanwhile someone shouts, hearken, people of RKA. Hearing this she gets shocked. His Majesty the Emperor of Riadin has come to you to seal the marriage alliance between our two nations. Hearing this she comes forward to see what's happening. Her servant stopping her said, Your Highness. She see down and found Kanach standing there with his army. His solitor shouts, Open your gates and receive the Emperor with respect and honor. She seeing Kanach thoughts, it's him. Kanach Riadin. Eusebia sitting on a sofa starts thinking ways to stop the war. She thoughts, I must think of a way. At this rate, the alliance will fail and I won't be able to stop Riadin's invasion of RKA, no matter what I do. She starts biting her nails and said, think, think. Then she remember about last night and said, last night, Dietrich tried to win me over to his cause instead of having me killed as he had done in my previous life. He even revealed the truth of the Guardian for that purpose. He likely regards me as a useful pawn in his game. That's it. So long as I appear useful, he will think twice before getting rid of me. She said, and now I must do the same and prove my worth to the Emperor. I must tread carefully and keep the secret of the Guardians from him. Meanwhile Kanach enters in the room. He seeing Eusebia said, Princess Eusebia? She gets nervous seeing Kanach. She steps towards him and said, I am deeply honored to finally meet the Emperor in person. Meanwhile Kanach reached to her and touched her face. She gets shocked. He said, you seem unhappy about this marriage arrangement. Eusebia gets confused and replied, on the contrary, your majesty, tis is a great delight for me to become the consort of the EMP. Kanach with a smile on his face interrupts her and said, your lies are as sweet as those lovely lips of yours. She said, I would never dare lie to you, your majesty. He said, could you stop calling me that? She gets confused and said again, your majesty? He sighed and replied, there you go again. 
I'm not used to these highborn manners, and I would prefer to be called by my name, if that's all right with you. She said, Forgive me if I have displeased you, your majesty, but propriety demands that I. She stopped and think, What's going on here? Did this happen in my previous life too? Kanach asked her, If I start calling you by your name, will you do the same for me? She thinks, No, this is not the man I remember. In my previous life Kanach Riyadin never paid me a private visit before the wedding ceremony. Kanach said Eusebia. She still lost in her thoughts said, nor did he never call me by my name. Kanach said, do you not know my name? She starts waving her hands and said, I do, I do. She call him by his name, see Kanach. She again starts thinking, I don't understand. In the next scene Eusebia's servant with tears of half pines in her eyes said, I don't know how else to say this. She looking at Eusebia in her wedding dress said, You're so beautiful. Eusebia standing in front of a mirror said to her servant, There, there, Cecile. Dry your tears. Her servant whipping her tears said, It breaks my heart to see your highness forced into such a hastily prepared wedding. You deserve so much better, princess. You should be walking down the aisle in a prettier wedding dress. Meanwhile Eusebia in her thoughts said, This is already extravagant enough compared to what I had to wear before going back in time. Her servant starts crying and hugs her. Her servant said to her, Please don't leave us, your highness. Eusebia said, Don't cry, Cecile. It's not as if I'm riding out to battle. It's just a wedding ceremony. She said still, Leaving for the empire means I am putting my life on the line. This man, who is to be my husband, has taken my motherland hostage and expects an here who can wield magic. And the only way to protect my people is to make him believe that I can fulfill his demands. They hold each other's hands and she thoughts, husband and wife? The father standing beside them said, In the name of the Fihar, the gatekeeper of the beginning and the end, I hereby pronounce you man and wife. Meanwhile she thoughts, no, enemies crossing blades on the battlefield. The father said, let the kiss of vow seal your bond as one. Kanach removes cloth from her face. She thoughts, he still looks the same. Not a blemish on that perfect face. She thoughts, he seemed more a god than a man at the time, but after what I'd witnessed in that war. He no longer inspires all within me. This is not a bond of matrimony but a tool that I must use wisely to maintain peace. Ichi gets close to her and tries to kiss her. She thoughts, no matter what he does, my heart must remain. He interrupts her kissing her. She gets confused and shy. She thought stone cold. Kanach said to her, are you all right? He holds her and said, Eusebia? In the next scene they started to leave. Eusebia seeing the servant's thoughts, no wedding feast this time. They appeared to be in a greater rush to leave than what I remember. She turns towards the palace and touching her necklace she recalls her brother's words, so you have finally decided to join my cause. You made the right choice, dear sister. Your decision shall open the path towards Arcia's salvation. She thought, salvation? How absurd. Meanwhile Kanach interrupts her saying, that look on your face. Every moment must be painful for you. She gets confused. She turns her face backward and see Kanach following her. She said, Your Majesty. She turns towards him and thought, Should I fail to give him an heir within the next several years, he'll realize that I'm infertile. If it comes to that, my plans to foil Dietrich's scheme will end in failure. Kanach said, Hmm? He turning back said to Eusebia, I shall join you shortly. She gets confused and asked, I beg your pardon? Kanach standing next to carriage said, I am aware it is considered taboo here in the north for the groom and bride to share a carriage. He kneeled down and said, But I cannot in good conscience leave you alone after seeing how badly this is upsetting you. He moves forward his hand and said, After you. She seeing it gets shocked and said, Your Majesty. Kanach said, Get in or you would be keeping the emperor on his knees for all to watch. She gets confused after seeing this all. She giving her hand to Kanach's thoughts, how strange. Different things are happening now that didn't occur in my previous life. 
she steps on his thigh and his hand. She thoughts while entering the carriage, first, he visits me before the wedding, and now, he's kneeling for me. I should remain indifferent, but I cannot help but feel a faint pull that wasn't there before. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Does this change herald a brighter future for us all, or is it an omen of misfortune? They were passing through a forest. She sits beside Kanach seeing outside from the window. Kanach said to her, You still look upset. She replied, Upset? Kanach said, Are you feeling unwell, or are you planning your escape from the marriage you never wanted? Which is it? She gets angry hearing this and shouts, That's a ridiculous accusation. She said, As your lawfully wedded wife, I am now beholden to the duties of the Empress Consort. He smiled and said, Duties, H.M.? Quite. Are all princesses as devoted as you are? He turns his head towards her and said, Were you merely fulfilling another one of your duties, when you kissed the man you despise before the marriage altar? Eusebi replied, If I may be so bold, your majesty, whatever is the matter with you? She said, You seem to believe I can't stand the sight of you. Kanach sighed and said, I have been wanting to ask you since the moment we first met, what sort of person am I in your eyes? She replied, The Emperor of Riadin is a well-respected hero. She said, Tales of your valiant feats had reached my ears well before the marriage talk began, including the matter of your origin, of course. He said, I'm not interested in the stories they tell about me. I am asking what you think, madam. Who am I to you see be a cataril? He asked to her, Do you see me as a hero too? She gets confused. She replied, I to me, your... Kanach said, That's what I thought. We're married now, but you're not even trying to conceal your distrust of me. You remained white as fresh snow even after the ceremony ended. It's as if you found the whole affair repulsing. He said, My suspicions were correct. This marriage, it's... Suddenly she thought... I can't let him annul the marriage. She rises and shouts, You misunderstand. I don't find you or this marriage repulsing. I simply... Kanach asked her to sit back to her seat saying, Return to your seat. You might fall if the carriage comes to a sudden estio. Meanwhile the horse carrying the carriage suddenly rises his legs up causing the carriage to stumble. Eusebia felt shouting, Ah! Kanach said, Eusebia? She closed her eyes. Meanwhile Kanach catch her, and she opens her eyes finding herself in his arms. He said, Eusebia? Kanach asked her, Are you hurt anywhere? She finding herself in his arms gets uncomfortable. Kanach said to her, Eusebia? He said, Is something the matter? He holds her face and asked, Are you in pain? One of his servant interrupts saying, Is everything all right, your majesty? Kanach asked him, Why did we stop? His servant bowed and replied, I humbly beg. Your Majesty's forgiveness. A fallen tree is blocking the way. The men are already playing the part. We will soon be ready to depart. Kanach gets confused and said, That tree was still standing when we entered Arkaye. He saw Eusebia trembling and said to her, Eusebia. Eusebia thoughts, The power of the guardians comes from the Arjunwood. Outside of our K.A., we are severed from this blessing. Our dire secret Dietrich revealed to me that night. She said in her mind, I thought he was lying. But it's really happening. I can feel my magic leaving me. Without my powers, I won't be able to defend myself. Against attempts on my life. Meanwhile her inner self and a spirit from comes and said yes. This must be your brother's ploy to have you assassinated. This is what he's been planning all along. He wants to get rid of you and start a war. Eusebia said enough. The spirit said, poor clueless Eusebia. Once again you will perish here. Alone and in despair. Eusebia starts crying and said, stop it. I won't hear another word. Please. Kanach said Eusebia. He hugs her and she gets shocked. Kanach said to her, Try to breathe as slowly and deeply as you can. Look around you, nothing has happened, and you are safe. 
There is no one here. Who wishes you harm? She holds him and with tears in her eyes. Meanwhile, after some time, Kanash said to her, I owe you an apology. She gets confused and said, what for? He replied, for bothering you all day with my attitude. Perhaps that's what made the journey so exhausting for you. I deliberately sought you attention. Because you didn't seem to hold me in high regard. He clenched his hand and said, Although I was already aware that a woman of your caliber would not be content with me, it was still hard to accept the truth. He said to Eusebia, But no matter what you think of me, I will not annul our marriage. The peace between our nations shall hold. I give you my word. She hearing this gets confused. Kanash said, So if you can, pray do not look at me with such fear in your eyes. Meanwhile she thought, I think I know now why he seems different from what I remember. I never had the chance to speak with him privately in my past life. Which is why I never really thought about getting to know him as a person before today. She said to him, I was not lying when I said I'm familiar with the tales of your heroic deeds. She recalls the moment when she learned about Kanach. Oh, the irony. It was to gain a better understanding of my enemy that I first started following the records of Kanach's rise to power. The more I learned about him, however, the more I began to doubt whether he was the same person I knew from my past life. A former slave who fought to free others like him and liberate the people from the tyrannical rule of the previous emperor. This man, could it be that he's... She said to Kanach, I do not fear you, your majesty, nor am I displeased with this marriage arrangement. She said, thank you for helping me again my calm, Kanach. Hearing this he gets shocked. She smiled and said, you wanted me to call you by your name, did you not? Kanach gets confused and said, Eusebi. Meanwhile someone interrupts saying, your majesty. She thought seeing outside, the harbor is in sight. The future has been changed. I still draw breath. And no one has broken out between RKA and the Empire, yet. What lies ahead is still a mystery, but... She's seeing outside through window thinks, everything will be alright. I know it in my heart. Meanwhile a green-haired boy asked to his servant while holding his tie, what could his majesty be thinking? Isn't it too soon for the wedding ceremony to end? Did he truly rush out of the chapel the moment they said their vows? From what I recall, he'd been going on about marrying the Arsian princess for an entire month. His servant said, a message arrived, my lord. The emperor's courage has left the woodlands. The green-haired guy said, is that so? Phew. Well then, let's go and see what kind of lady our esteemed empress is. In the next scene, Eusebius seeing the port said, oh. She said seeing a ship, what a grand ship. Kanach holding her hand replied, A regular vessel won't be able to cover the long journey that lies ahead. Mind your footing, it's hard to see in the dark. She said, Your Majesty, worries too much? I have my eyes wide open. Meanwhile she slipped and Kanach catch her, she said, Thank you. It seems I really should have watched my footing. Kanach holding her from her shoulder said, Please allow me to assist you. She said, oh, I can walk on my own. Kanach said, I insist. You might have fractured your ankle. Eusebius said, I'm not made of glass. The green-haired boy seeing them said, what a surprising sight indeed, your majesty. Kanach seeing him said, O.S.Y.L.N. Eusebia thoughts, O.S.Y.L.N. The Aslan Vaynar? Aslan said, my sincerest apologies for the belated introduction. He bowed and said, Lord O.S. Wylan, at your service. Riyadin Empire's first secretary of the interior, Baron Aslan Vaynar. Aslan Vaynar, a man of humble origin, born to an impoverished country baron. He lifted his house from dire straits with his uncanny knack for turning a prophet. The lessons he had learned from his own life taught him to judge others by merit and not bloodline. And this allowed him to recognize the greatness within Kanach Riyadin who was no more than a lowly slave soldier. As Kanach's strategist, Osawayan guided the evolution to victory. 
thereby securing a position of power in Riadin's imperial court. Eusebius seeing Aslan thoughts, how could I forget? His name was always mentioned alongside Kanatches in all my investigations. It feels as if I'm looking at a character straight out of a legend. Aslan said to Eusebia, Is there anything I can assist you with, your majesty? She replied, hmm, No, I. Kanach said, Aslan is not only a dear friend of mine, but also a high-ranking official in the Ministry of Interior. It wouldn't hurt to have him as acquaintance. Eusebia said, I see. I am a Sibia Cadrill. Ah, well, Eusebia read in now, I suppose. Kanach gets confused and she said, Pleased to make your acquaintance, Lord Oslin. Kanach blushed and Oslin said, The pleasure is all mine. Shall we board the ship now? Kanach said, Ah, of course. Kanach said to Eusebia, Take my hand, Eusebia. She said to him, I told you, I can walk on my own just fine, Kanach. Everyone starts whispering and Kanach said to her, But you are almost tripped and fell without my help. She said, Well, I... Aslan said, How heartwarming to see the emperor and our new empress being so intimate in public. Eusebia thoughts, Using the emperor's name in the presence of his lessers may appear in inappropriate. Eusebia said, Thank you for the reminder. I will. Refrai meanwhile Kanach interrupts her saying to Aslan, She's my wife. She has every right to address me by my name. She gets shocked. Aslan replied, With all due respect, your majesty, propriety and decorum must be observed no matter what. Eusebia said, Let's all take a moment to calm down. Kanach said, That doesn't sound too convincing coming from a man who calls me by my name at every opportunity. Eusebia said, That was only in private. Aslan said, You should not forget your own advice, my friend. Propriety and decorum must be observed no matter what. She hearing all this gets shocked and confused. She thought, oh no. This is turning into an argument. Come to think of it. Kanach was quick to control his temper when he realized that I was not feeling well. He also showed concern when he saw me losing my balance while stepping out of the carriage. Perhaps he's the sort who reveals his forgiving side when others are vulnerable. She shouts, Kanach. She said, I feel faint. May I retire and rest? Aslan and Kanach get shocked and Kanach said, You feel faint? Kanach pull her and said, Forgive me, I should have noticed. Huh. He picks her in his arms and said, Let me take you to your room. She shouts, A-C-K. Eusebius said, Please, I don't need to be carried. Seeing this everyone gets shocked. She shouts, Put me down already. Kanach brings her to her room and said, This is your room. He said to her, Let me know should you need any. He said, Are you sure you are just feeling faint? Your face is flushed. Perhaps it's a fever, she said, I'm fine, Kanach. She thought, That was so embarrassing. Meanwhile she noticed a dress and said, Hm? Is that? A dress? A green dress was laid out on bed. She comes towards it and asked, Was this laid out for me? Kanach asked, Do you not like it? She sits beside it and touches it. She said, I do. It's beautiful. This shade of green is just what I like. She thoughts, I can't recall anyone ever gifting me such a lovely dress, even back in RKA. She turns towards Kanach and said to her, I'd like to meet the person who prepared this dress and thank them personally. He replied, that won't be necessary. Kanach said it was me. Eusebia said, thank you. I will treasure it. Kanach said, it's only a dress, Eusebia. He said to her, anyhow, I should leave you to rest. I have some pressing matters demanding my attention, but I will return once they are they are taken care of. She asked, return? Here you mean? He leaned down and said, yes, we are married now. He said spouses should sleep together, no? She gets confused in thoughts, I hadn't considered that. She said, does that mean? We will be sharing a bad starting tonight. She thoughts, he wishes to spend the night in this room? Is he saying that he wants to share my bed tonight? Well, he made me for an heir, 
So I knew this was bound to happen. But it's far too soon. I assumed he'd wait until we reached Riadin and performed the deed when he couldn't afford to delay his marital obligation any further. What has him in such a hurry? Could it be that he finds me desirable? She blushed and thought, I'm not thinking straight. Even if he does find me desirable, he'll realize that I'm infertile. Should I fail to bear his seed after sleeping with him? Kanach holds her chin and said, Eusebia? She thoughts, no. Kanach holding her chin said, I'm only saying this out of concern. But sharing a bedchamber does not necessarily mean we will be consummating our marriage. He said to Eusebia, you are not only the empire's but our newlywed bride. It would not reflect well on you if we were to sleep in separate rooms on our wedding night. He said, but rest assured, I don't intend to force myself on you. She said, I only wait upon your pleasure. Kanash said, no, I would rather not fulfill our nocturnal obligation on rocking ship. He turns and said, besides, climbing into the bed of an unwilling companion is something I found distasteful. She said, you mean? Kanach replied, yes, I will wait until you feel ready to consummate this marriage. She gets shocked and asked, but why? I thought you were anxious to have an heir from me. Kanach said, tis only our first night together and my bed is already eager to secure the realm's succession. How blessed I am to have found such a dedicated wife. He holds her hairs and said, I'm in no great hurry, Eusebia. He said, if you truly wish to give me an heir, pretend to love me at the very least. He said, although we started out with a political marriage, I hope to see genuine love blossom between us. After a few hours Kanach was sitting in thoughts, Eusebia. He recalled the moment when Eusebia said, but why? I thought you were anxious to have an heir from me. Kanach thoughts, this is harder than I thought. He said, or perhaps it's better this way. It will be easier on us both. That she doesn't remember the past. He said, this way we can start in meanwhile Oslin in hurry comes and shouts, Kanach. Oslin said, what's this I hear about sending our men to protect our keen borders? We never discussed this with us. Kanach said, the people of Arkea are left without their guardian because of us. We must do what we can to make up for that. Oslin said, this marriage alliance with Arkea is complete and utter nonsense. He comes towards Kanach and said, we are clear to them in every respect. What's to stop us from subjugating that nation of milksops? You demanded neither the mining rights nor the treasure in their vaults. You are risking the lives of your loyal soldiers for the hand of some pampered princess. Kanach said to Oslin, Choose your words wisely, Oslin. Kanach said, Eusebia is not just some pampered princess. I am prepared to throw away everything and more for her sake. No price is too high when it comes to her. Oslin in anger shouts, Unbelievable. What's gotten into that head of yours? Kanash said, get out. The room's already stuffy enough without your constant fuming. Oslin shouts, stuffy? It's freezing in here. What's the matter with you? Meanwhile, Eusebia in her room feels sick. And NGH. Ugh. She thoughts, I feel sick. What's happening to me? Is this a side effect of the Arjunwood's powers leaving me? She rising from her bed thoughts, I can't let Kanachas find out that I'm losing my magic. Her vision gets blurry and she thoughts, I will ask one of the servants to get me some medicine. I must stay strong. She unconsciously said, is anyone there? Fetch me some medicine, whichever you have on hand. Kanach hearing this said, medicine? Are you not feeling well? She said, Kanach? She tries to move back saying, it's only a mild headache. I'm fine. Kanach grabs her from her arm and said, You're clearly not. You are looking awfully pale. I'll send for a fizz. Meanwhile, she starts feeling nausea and MPH. She thoughts, My stomach is churning even though I haven't eaten a thing. HRK. She vomit on Kanach's shirt. Suddenly, she gets shocked realizing what she have done. She said no. She said in her mind, what have I done? Kanach said to her, 
You should have let me summon a physician. Eusebia? She starts trembling. She said, I beg your forgiveness. I... I did not mean any disrespect. Meanwhile, in her thoughts, she said, what should I do? I already started off on the wrong foot, and now I go on and soiled his clothes too. He must be furious with me. I wouldn't be surprised if he's having second thoughts about this marriage. Her inner self again comes and said, blunder after blunder, you can't seem to do anything right. Whatever is the problem? Eusebia? Is it really that hard to please the emperor? You have already lost your magic the only thing Kanach wants from you. Keep making these mistakes and you will be hastening your own demise. She said to Kanach, I'm tribally soy your majesty. I'll clean up the mess immediately. Kanach said, no need to trouble yourself. It's hardly worthy of your concern. She said, but I dated the emperor's clothes. Kanach removed his shirt and said, there we go. Problem solved. He said, I can simply put one of my shirt, and it will be as if nothing happened. No need to hold yourself accountable for over something so trivial. Eusebia sitting on sofa said, I fear I may have displeased you. Kanach closing his shirt's button said, why should I be displaced? He sits beside her and said, I'm not ignorant enough to raise an eyebrow at someone who's visibly seasick. She asked, seasick? Kanach checking for her fever replied, yes, seasick. Kanach asked her, this is your first time traveling on a ship, correct? I should have made better arrangements for you. In any case, you shouldn't let this little thing bother you any further. But still, this reminds me of my days on the battlefield. He said there was a time in my life when I was always on the move from one battlefield to the next. Back then, I met a young man who began shadowing me relentlessly, begging for the chance to join the revolution. And what in a boot liquor he was. I will serve you to the end of my days. I will gladly lay down my life for you. You get the picture. One day, we happened upon the corpse of a decapitated soldier and... What the? He asked, can you guess who that young man was? She shake her head for a no. He said it was Oslin. Oslin said, I can't take it anymore. She thoughts, the Oslin Vaynar? Kanach said, and instead of apologizing for that unpleasantness, he blamed me for picking out that led us to the corpse. She gets shocked and said, I can hardly believe it. She starts laughing and said, who would have thought he was once such a delicate young man? I'm beginning to suspect there's a big softy hiding behind that tough shell even now. Kanach replied, well, after several years. He conveniently chose to forget what a cry baby he used to be. He said, that's how time works. It's magic. A few more voyages like this and today's little mishap will fade away from your memory. It's no more than a drop in the ocean when you put it into perspective. Eusebia asked, a drop in the ocean. She thought, I wonder if he feels the same about the horrible things he had to witness in his youth. Mere drops in the great ocean of his memory. If that is indeed the case, how unkind life must have been to him. I wish I could learn more about the real Kanach Reden. Not the ruthless man portrayed by the chronicles and rumors. Meanwhile a boy rushed toward Eusebia's room saying, Oh no, I'm late. Phew, he starts trembling. He knocks the door and said, Your Majesty? Kanach said, Ah, that's him. Eusebia asked, Are we expecting someone? Kanach replied, Yes, I sent for the court physician. He said, Where is he, the little crook? A court physician should always be at the ready. Eusebia said, It's still dark outside, Kanach. The sun hasn't even come up yet. Kanach asked to boy, What are you waiting for? Come in and do your work. The boy said, I humbly beg your majesty's forgiveness. I wanted to make sure everything was ready. Kanach said, enough with the excuses. The empress needs you. The boy bowed and said, tis is a great honor, madam. Seeing the boy, Eusebia gets confused and said, eh? The physician boy introduced himself to Eusebia saying, I am Simon, the court physician. Eusebia seeing the boy thoughts, 
That boy is the court physician of Riadin? The boy asked, Is something the matter, your majesty? She thought, I'm staring. Aren't I? Eusebia introduced herself to the boy saying, Hello, Simon. I am Eusebia, princess of RKA and now the empress of Riadin. Thank you being here at this early hour. The boy replied, I am happy to be of service, madam. Kanach gets angry and said, Are you done talking? The empress suffered a great deal while you took your sweet time. Now tell me what ails her. Eusebia said, Kanach, please, I already feel much better. No need to reprimand him so. Kanach said, Negligence has its consequences, Eusebia. Kanach asked the boy, Well, what are you waiting for? Get on with it. The boy rushed towards Eusebia and said, At once. While the boy was checking Eusebia for fever, she thought, He's shaking. He must be afraid of Kanach. She holds his hand and asks, Simon, was it? How old are you? He replied, Turning eighteen this year, your majesty. She said, Ah, you're about the same age as my younger brother. She said, A young man of eighteen and you're already the court physician of Riadin. You must be a master of your craft. Simon replied, I still have a long way to go. She turns toward Kanach and said, Nonsense. The emperor would not trust an unskilled man with such an important position. She asked Kanach, right Kanach? Kanach said, he does have a quick mind such as he is. A single glimpse is all it takes for him to memorize things. I placed him at court hoping he would come in useful one day. Not everyone can perfectly memorize human autonomy charts at such a young age, after all. Eusebia said, see? He thinks you are an asset. He likes you. No need to be so jumpy around him now. Simon gets so happy and said, Your Majesty. He said, Your Majesty, your honors me. I am by no means a man of many talents. But I intend to serve to the best of my ability. She said, Thank you, Simon. It's showing to know that we are in good hands. After Simon leaves, Kanach sits beside Eusebia and said to her, Simon's a timid boy. He doesn't easily warm up to new people. You must have made a great first impression on him. She replied, that's good. Kanach said, good? She replied, yes, I thought I was expected to get acquainted with your inner cycle. Is there a problem? Kanach asked Eusebia, was holding Simon's was your way of getting acquainted with him. She hearing this gets confused. She thought he seems upset. Understandable. He probably expects his wife to maintain some distance from other men. She said to Kanach, I'm sorry. Kanach said, no, don't apologize. It was not my intention to scold you. She said, Simon reminded me of my brother. I couldn't just sit there and watch when he was so evidently distressed. As for holding his hand, I learned from your example when you took me into your arms in the carriage. You showed me how the soothing touch of another could help in moments of panic. But in the future I will try to be more mindful of how I should approach others. He sighed and said, Oh, Eusebia, she asked, yes? He puts a candy in her mouth, she said, Is there MMPH? She asked, What's this? Kanach replied, Something to clear your palate after that bitter medicine. She after eating it said, Candied raspberries? These are my favorite. Kanach said, Go ahead and eat your fill. There's plenty more. She said, I am eating to my heart's content. Kanach said, but you still haven't swallowed the berry I put in your mouth. He said, just like a little rabbit nibbling on a leaf. They both stare at each other. Eusebia starts blushing. Kanach said, Simon's medicine should kick in soon. You'll be feeling better before you know it. It's getting late. Try to get some sleep. While Kanach was leaving, she asked, what about you? He replied, I still have some paperwork to go through. She asked, are you heading out again? He said, no, I brought the paperwork here. I can't leave you here alone until we can be sure you are okay. Rest now, Eusebia. I will be keeping watch by your side. After a few times, she wakes up and finds Kanach sitting in front of her. She thought, so he was serious. He hasn't left the room. He doesn't take offense at my lack of decorum. 
and shows proper care and concern for my well-being. I wonder if he truly sees me as a spouse. He must learn to love and protect. If this marriage alliance can bring lasting peace between our people, perhaps I too could learn the same. She suddenly think about her brother, Dietrich said, my dear Eusebia. That is a dream well beyond your reach. She holds the blanket and think. Yes, I cannot give Kanach the air he wants. He'll cost me aside once he realizes that I'm worthless. His generosity and kindness will turn into cruelty before long. She closed her eyes and think, I can't afford to be distracted. I am here to stop him from destroying our K.A. Should I allow him to sit through the ruse? She turns towards other side and thought, everything will have been for naught. The ship sails over water in a bright sunny day. Eusebia wakes up and noticed that Kanach has left, she said, he's gone. A servant asked Eusebia, are you sure you want to go out, madam? Perhaps it's best that you take some more rest until you're fully recovered. She wearing the green dress Kanach gave her replied with a smile on her face, not to worry. I feel much better now after a good night's sleep. Besides, this is my first time traveling on a ship. It would be a waste to sleep the day away in the cabin. She comes outside and seeing the sea gets astonished. Seeing the sea, she said, so this is what sea looks like. The guard shouts, hail to the empress. She gets shocked. She turns and said, ah, thank you for your hard work, gentlemen. She noticing the guard's thoughts, the same look I saw on Oslin's face last night. They're still wary of me, every one of them. No surprise there. To them, I'm no more than a stranger. She in her mind said, Riadin is a newly emerged empire. What Kanach really needs is not Arcea's magical pedigree, but a concert from Riadin's nobility who could help garner support from his subjects. Instead of meeting the expectation of his people, however, Kanach choose to make a foreign princess from an obscure and diminishing kingdom. Hence their thinly veiled misters. If not open dislike. I didn't have to face this sort of problem back home because mages are treated with respect in RKA. Now I'm suddenly scared to discover what lies in store for me in Riadin. Meanwhile Simon rushed towards her shouting, Your Majesty. He said, Thank goodness. I have been looking for you everywhere. Madam, she asked him, if it's about last night's symptoms. I assure you I feel fine now. Your medicine worked like a charm. Simon said, it's chilly today. You might end up catching a cold if you spend too much time outside. And should it come to that, know that your negligence will not be overlooked. Kanach comes and said in a cold tone, court physician. Simon gets shocked and said, Kanach? He holds Eusebia's arm and said, you weren't in your cabin when I returned. He picks Eusebia in his arms and said to her, come, let's get you back inside. She shouts, Sa. Ah. She said, Kanach, please, put me down. Kanach replied, the ship's rocking too much. I don't want to see you take another tumble. Meanwhile, Simon said, phew. He picking her in his arms comes inside and Eusebia said to him, Your retainers would hate to see their emperor behaving in such a manner. He asked, Are my manners the issue now? She asked, You are a figure of authority to your people. It would be inappropriate for you to be seen carrying a woman in your arms everywhere you go. He said, Eusebia, There is something that I should have mentioned to you sooner. He leaned toward her and said, This is the reason that I sought to wear the crown. He said, I want to change things you see. To build a country where people can live their lives in freedom, unfettered by the chains of etiquette and hierarchy. Kanach said to her while putting her on bed, You need to worry about what my retrainers would think. Those in my immediate service have learned to respect me for who I am. Those who had made the mistake of looking down on me, well, they're long gone. She said, but meanwhile she saw some sort of books, she picks one and asks to Kanach, what's this? He said, ah, I brought some books for you while you was asleep. There's not much to do in the cabin, after all. Eusebia said, they have books here. 
Kanach said books are excellent traveling companions on long voyages. These came from the bookshelves of the palace library. He asked, or do you not like reading? She replied hugging the book, I do. She said I love books. I try to read whenever I have time. But I've been too busy of late. Kanach said then perhaps we can spend some time reading together. They both starts reading books and she thoughts. Read and truly is an impressive empire. These are. These are all her books, and they've been kept in pristine condition. They say Riordan's library is the largest in the continent. Kanach's penchant for books must have been the reason. The more I get to know him, the more new sides I discover. I always pictured him as a battle-hardened soldier, not someone who would spend time in and engrossed in books. She seen Kanach said, so that's what he looks like when he's deep in thought. She recalls her past life. Reading was a favorite pastime of mine, even in my previous life. Without much company at the palace. I nursed my bitter loneliness by reading the works of others. It allowed me to peek into the lives and thoughts of writers I had never met. But now. She closed the book and hugged it. She thinks, now I know how it feels to have someone who shares my enthusiasm for books. It would be lovely if the life that awaits me in, read and turned out to be just as peaceful. Saying this she fell to sleep. Kanach waking up her said, Eusebia? Eusebia. He shakes her she said, M.M. She wakes up and seeing him said, Kanach? What is it? Kanach tells her, the ship is now making port. We will be entering the Imperial Palace very soon. They left the ship and enters in the city on a carriage. Eusebius said to her, Should you not, perhaps make an appearance before your people first? She pulled the window and said, You are attending with a foreign pansis as your wife, after all. Your subjects must have been waiting for the destruction with bated breath. Kanach replied, There will be a public address in a few days. They'll get the distraction they want then. He said, if possible. I'd like to introduce you to them. After holding a more fitting wedding ceremony here in the capital. What we had in RKA was not more than a mere formality. She tilt her head and said, was it? Kanach said, a proper show of ceremony will cement your place. As the emperor's consort. Welcome to the imperial palace, your majesty. A servant said, I am Marianne, head of the Imperial Household Staff. She bowed and said, Preparations have been made to ensure your comfort, madam. Eusebia replied, Thank you, Marianne. Allow me to give you a brief tour of the palace to help you settle in. She thought, The whole palace is a testament to Riordan's wealth and prosperity. No wonder RKA lost the war in my previous life. We underestimated Kanach and failed to see the importance of understanding our foe. She noticed something and said, hmm? She points her finger at a building and said, that building seems different from the rest. The servant said, ah. The servant tells Eusebia, that manor is recent addition to the palace complex. Would you like to visit, madam? She thoughts, interesting. It looks exactly like the old palace in RKA. Later, perhaps. I would prefer to complete the tour of the Grand Palace first. The servant said, Yes, Your Majesty. The wing on the second floor has been furnished for your future children. She showing Eusebia her bedchamber said, And this here is the Empress's bedchambers, which will function as your apartment in the Grand Palace. She gets astonished seeing her room. She said, This might be too extravagant for me. The servant said, We took the liberty of having your bath drawn, madam. Nothing like a warm bath after a long journey. Eusebia thanks her saying, Oh, thank you. She seeing her bed gets astonished and the servant standing beside her said, I shall also remind the staff to ensure that everything is in order for tonight. She turns towards the servant and asks, For tonight? The servant said, Yes. His majesty and madam will spend the first night together in the palace. Kanach enters in the room and said the room seems to have changed. While I was away for work. Eusebia said, Marianne and the servants paid special care to make this a memorable night for me. Kanach said, a memorable night hm? 
That explains the gown. She said, oh? You see be a wearing a blue dress said, it's too much, is it not? Kanach said, it suits you too much, is what? I gave you my word that we wouldn't take the next step until you were ready. But when I see you like this, she gets confused hearing this. Kanach clenched his hand and said, never mind. He steps towards the bed and said, you must be tired. Let's go to bed. She said, I'm sorry I confess I'm not too well versed. She said, in the affairs of the bedchamber, unlike yourself. Kanach said, why apologize? I'm not exactly an expert myself. Kanach blushed and said, I too haven't been intimate with anyone else. She asked, really? Kanach asked her, why do you sound so surprised? She replied, because you are the emperor. Rulers are encouraged to secure their line of succession early on. He sits on the bed and said, or could it be? That you prefer your men experienced? That's a rather difficult problem to tackle. I can't get out there and educate myself. Eusebia replied, I meant no such thing. It was just a little unexpected, that's all. He said, the problem remains though. Neither of us truly knows how to initiate things. Shall we give it a little practice first? She asked, practice? Kanach holding her hand said, yes, holding hands is always the first step I heard. He said to Eusebia, and maybe we can lie down next to each other and see where it goes. Meanwhile, she in her mind said, what should I do? She said to Kanach, one moment I, I feel uncomfortable in this gown. I'll go get changed in the next room. Kanach stops her saying, wait, UCB Ed has buttons on the back. He steps towards her and holds her shoulder. He said, I could lend you a hand if that's all right with you. Kanach reaches to her and touch her back. He starts opening her buttons and asks, may I? Kanach opens her gown's button sitting on the bed. After opening all buttons Kanach said to Eusebia, All done. She said to Kanach, Thank you. Kanach replied, It was nothing. Eusebia lying in bed in front of Kanach thoughts, How embarrassing. I made the emperor do the job of a handmaiden. Kanach said, Are we not going to practice Eusebia? She got shocked. Kanka moves his hand towards her and said, come closer. We're supposed to be holding hands. She giving her hand to him said, all right. She said, you had your own cabin during our travels. It must be uncomfortable for you to share a bed now when you're more used to sleeping alone. Kanach replied, it's fine. I'd actually been spending every night in your cabin. She asked, really? Kanach replied, yes, on a sofa next to your bed. I only use my cabin to wash up and get changed. She said that must have been tiring. Why didn't you sleep in your own bed? She sweats and said while sleeping, no Dietrich. Kanach said because you seem to be having nightmares. He said I promised I'd watch over you, did I not? She said you're not at all what I had in mind. Before we crossed paths, all I ever heard about you were the most chilling tales. I expected an emperor who sees the throne through bloodshed and evolution to be stern and unforgiving. But you are more approachable than I thought. She said, I was worried that I might not be what you were looking for in a wife. And he touches her face and said, nonsense. I couldn't have asked for a better match. I want you to know I don't regret sealing our union before that marriage altar. He said, believe me, Eusebia. You will always be needed here. She replied, it's a relief to hear that I am grateful to you. Meanwhile in her thoughts she said, needed a chem? I shouldn't be getting ahead of myself. He has something he needs from me. There's the sole reason I was brought here. He only wants a broodmare who can give him a child capable of using magic. On the next morning she wakes up and find roses and said, flowers? She touches them and thought, they weren't here last night. Perhaps one of the servants brought them here. Meanwhile the servant come and said, Your Majesty. She standing in front of her said, I trust Madam had a pleasant night? Eusebia replied, I did. Good morning, Marianne. She rise from the bed and said, I had the most relaxing sleep I've had in a long time thanks to these flowers. 
The scent is really soothing. The servant said, Very good, madam. She bowed and said, Is there anything else your majesty requires? Meanwhile Eusebia in her thoughts said, hmm. She is committed to her duty and her manners are impeccable. And yet, she has her guard up around me, just like the rest of these imperials. I should remember not to let every little thing get to me. There is much to do wallowing in self-pity will only slow me down. Eusebia said to her, A light breakfast, perhaps. I have plans right after. She asked, Plans, madam? Eusebia said, I'm thinking of taking a look around the palace library. In the next scene we saw Eusebia in the palace library. After seeing it she said, incredible. She asked, how did they manage to fill up a library this big with so many books? A servant standing behind her replied, we have been accumulating unique pieces that have never been formally published, madam. Such a transcripts of folk tales and spoken poetry. She turns back hearing this. Eusebia asked him, Is there a section dedicated to magic? He raised his hand and said, Yes, your majesty. Materials on magic are housed in the secret archives that only a secret few may enter. He said, Including the empress, of course. She peeks inside and said, Ah. She said, I'd like to go now, if you don't mind. She touching the book's thought, I can't wait to see what hidden lores lie within. Some of these books might offer more information about the guardians of RKA. Hmm? She noticed a green book and said, that book. Is that what I think it is? She picks the book and sits on a chair. She seeing the book thought, the heyday of magic ended centuries ago. Studies on magic should be hard to come by. But they had one right way all along. They say non-human races still use magic today, unlike humans. If anyone knows more about Arsian guardians, it's them. 300 years ago, swarms of blasphemous abominations invaded the realm of men, threatening even the sylvan body of the Arjunwood and her domain. The very land cried out in agony, and answering that cry was a warrior of Cataral blood who arrived to purge the abominations. When her task was done, the warrior vowed to forever stand as the guardian of the Arjunud's hallowed forest. Her steadfast devotion immensely pleased the goddess Fihar, who blessed the Cataral bloodline by allowing its members a fraction of her divine might. The fragile flesh of mortals, however, proved to be too weak a vessel for Fihar's divine power, and the Catarals were forced to stabilize their souls by binding themselves to the Arjunwood, never to know the joy of ordinary existence again. She said, I already know about all of this. There's only one known exception to this fate. Shinasa Cadrill, eternal friend of the Sylvan Elves and savior of woods. Shinasa surpassed the limitations of her mortal body and bore a child who received the favor of the Sylvan Elves. These eldritch beings who make their home in the hidden lands still mourn and long for their dearest friend and guardian. She reading it thoughts, Shinasa Cadrill. According to the Chronicles, she's a guardian who was active 300 years ago. But how did she come to be with a child? Guardians lose the ability to procreate upon awakening. Eternal friend of the Sylvan Elves. I wondered what she did for them to earn such a title. They could stop here. I should probably probably seek out these elves and get more information on Genesa. But where can I find them? Meanwhile Kanach comes in and said, Eusebia. She rise from the chair and said, Ah, Kanach? Kanach asked her, What are you still doing here? Stepping outside from library, Kanach asked her, I heard you miss your meal. Do you enjoy neglecting yourself? He said, It was quite a sight to see your servants running around in panic. I'm not surprised anyone would be worried with the empress missing from the grand palace throughout the day. She replied, Oh, I'm sorry, Kanach. She with an innocent face said, I completely lost track of time in there. Kanach asked, giving me that look won't get you anywhere. Do you have any idea how worried I was today? He said I thought, she asked him, are you angry? He sighed and replied, I'm not. I simply never mind. I shouldn't have raised my voice. She said, 
but he didn't raise his voice at all. He holds her hand and said, I won't reprimand you for spending time in the library, but you need to start looking after yourself. He said, you are ready to frail and I'm worried about you. Truth be told, I had a feeling something like this would happen. You love reading, after all. He said I should have been more. He moves forward saying, attentive to your needs. He opens the door and asks her, come. She steps in and said, oh. She asked, what is this place? Kanach tells her, a garden designed with you in mind. Was the least I could do to impress the princes of Arkeye. She seeing flowers said, it's beautiful. I see flowers. She reached to the flower and touched it. She seeing those flowers said, how lovely. Kanach asked her, are those your favorite? She replied, I like my flowers small and dainty, especially when they come in a variety of colors. Kanach said, I'm glad you found something to keep yourself occupied. She hearing this gets confused. He said, but remember to take breaks and get some fresh air. And please don't skip your meals again. Kanach said, there are other beautiful gardens around the manor. You can also explore them in your spare time. That manor is a recent addition to the palace complex. She thoughts, I call Marianne mentioning it. Does that mean he had the Arcean style manor? And the greenhouse gardens? She thinks, build for my sake? I know I can't let him mislead me any further, but it's difficult to remain ignorant when he is so kind to me. She touching the flowers said, that's strange. The flow of mana is especially strong around this flower. Kanach said, is something the matter? Eusebia replied, no, I. She glanced and said, I was just admiring flowers. She thought, using magic should be impossible outside Arcean soil. Perhaps I've somehow managed to retain just enough magic to converse with plants. She reached towards the flower and thought, I'll need to talk to it without Kanach noticing. She touches the flower and thought, gently, slowly. Suddenly a voice come from the flower saying, No. No. She hearing this gets shocked. The voice from flower said, Why did you come? Save yourself. Fully as far as you can. She turns back and thought, Flee? From whom? Kanach gets confused seeing Eusebia and said, Eusebia? What's wrong? The voice from flower said, Go now. Or you will die here. One week prior, a girl in a black dress wearing a black hat and a man in red dress comes to the garden. The man asked, have you given it any thought? The girl replied, it doesn't matter how many times you ask. My answer will remain the same. The man said, come now, loosen up a little. This could work out well for the both of us. The girl turns and said in anger, you will not insult me, sir. If there is one thing that has kept me going all these years, it's the pride I have in my profession. The man said, pride? Ha! A fine word. He asked her, tell me, what value is pride compared to your precious little sister's life? She hearing this clutched her cloths. She said, how do you know about Edie's? He steps towards her and said, just take a moment to reconsider. I'm not asking you to do the impossible here. All I need is an occasional whisper or two on how a beautiful foreign empress spends her days. He said, which should not be a problem for you since you've been assigned to her service. She asked, but... He gives a smile and said, your presence here tonight, my dear. She turns back and he said, tells me that my offer has captured your interest. She starts trembling and the man said, I am confident we can get along famously. Wouldn't you agree? He shouts her name, Marianne, and we found that she was Marianne. In the next scene she was walking through a street where two guys were coughing and fell sick. She comes to her home with a worry on her face. Her sister was sick and she was sleeping on her bed. She enters in house and said, Edie's, it's me. She sits beside her and said, I'm sorry. I wish I could visit more often, but things have gotten even busier at the palace lately. She said, I brought your medicine. Her sister was sweating due to fever. Seeing her, she recalls the man's words, let's see, 
Your sister is dying from the rigor, yes? I can only imagine how worried you must be for that sweet, innocent girl. She's your only sister, correct? I've heard about the disease. It's a mysterious plague that has been spreading through the realm lately. Without regularly taking curative mana potions, the afflicted is doomed to die a horrible death, with a body stiff as a day's old corpse. We live in a world where magic is dying out, and prices are going through the roof by the day. And once it takes hold, the plague refuses to let go. How hard it must have been for you, my dear. He said, do this little thing for us, and we will ensure that you are rewarded handsomely. Imagine what you could do for your sister with riches that commoners can only dream of. She hearing this asked, we? Does that mean there is someone else giving the orders? The man replied with a smile, Oh, I cannot disclose such a dire secret to an outsider. You must accept my offer first. Take your time and think it through. She sitting next to her sister said, What must I do? Changing scenes we are Oslin giving some papers to Kanach saying, Here are the expected quarterly tax revenue from the West, Your Majesty. He said we have included a set of tax reform plans for your consideration. Kanach replied, Thank you, Oslin. Kanach said, Keep up this pace, and we will be able to present a finalized tax reform plan to the Parliament by the next session. Oslin, hiding his shoulders, replied, Yes, and it will no doubt ruffle more than a few feathers. He explains, Traditionalist nobles will spare no effort to derail the bill, as if their lives depended on it. And if we let them do that, they will try to abolish the civil service examination we have implemented next. Throwing the papers on table, Kanach said, Of course they will. Oslin shakes his head and said, After all, they still believe in the outdated nonsense that only those of noble blood are fit to rule. Kanach said, The same people who consented to crowning a slave soldier as their emperor. Oslin said, But they never consented, Kanach. They merely submitted. And the thing with submission is, it usually bounces back in an uprising. Please do not forget that, sire. Kanach stands from his chair saying, Ugh, those old snakes. I would have had them beheaded alongside that tyrant had they not been instrumental in securing my throne. Oslin said, We both know you wouldn't do that, being the good ruler you are. Kanach standing in front of window asked, A good ruler, am I? He said, No. I'm simply tired of spilling more blood in this land. He thought about Eusebia saying, You are not at all what I had in mind, Kanach. He thought, I wonder if you'd still call me a hero and like me. He clenched his hand and said, If you saw my past. Changing scenes, we saw Eusebia sitting in garden. Someone muttered, Eusebia is probably in the gardens. Marianne comes to her and asked, You summon me, madam? Eusebia stands and said, Yes, Marianne. She gets confused. Eusebia said to her, There is something I would like to ask you. Marianne asked, How may I serve you, madam? Eusebia replied, Walk with me, please. She said to Marianne, This might take a little while. Eusebia asked Marianne while walking, It's warm today, isn't it? Marianne replied, Yes. Eusebia said, a gigantic greenhouse garden made entirely of glass. I could hardly believe what I saw when I first came here. She reaching towards the flowers said, and the flowers they are so different from our sea and varieties. Meanwhile she thoughts, it was quite a shock at first. With magic waning in this world, I never imagined I could communicate with plants outside of RKA. She recalls the moment when the plant warns her saying, go now, or you'll die here. Kanach asked her seeing her shocked, What's wrong, Eusebia? She replied, Nothing. She said to Kanach, I thought I saw something. It must have been a trick of the eye. Meanwhile in her mind she said, What do you mean I will die here? Please, I need to know more. The plant tells her about Marianne and the man meeting saying, The woman among your retainers, the head servant. She's been meeting a suspicious man in this garden. They were talking about you. Eusebia inquires, Marianne. She asks the plant, Can you show me your memory of that night? I'd like to see what really happened. The plant replied, Hmm, all right. The plant starts glowing and said, Take your time. 
We're on your side, all of us. Then the plants show her everything. He opens her eyes and said, so that's how it is. Meanwhile, Marianne asked her while she was touching the flowers, your majesty? Eusebia replied, sorry about that. My mind wandered off, watching these lovely flowers. She asked Marianne, do you like flowers, Marianne? She replied, I think they're pretty. Eusebia starts laughing and said, haha, that's one way of putting it. Marianne said, I do not dislike them, madam. Marianne tells her, it's just that. Things of beauty wilt all too easily. And that is what I fear. She said, my sister is the real enthusiast when it comes to flowers. Eusebia asked, oh, you have a sister? Marianne replied, yes, madam. She's ten years younger than me. Our parents left us too soon, and I had to be a mother for her. She's been living alone ever since I took on the position of head servant. Eusebia said, that must be quite rough. Marianne said, nothing would ease my mind more than to have her come live with me here, but the afflicted have no place in the palace. Eusebia asked, afflicted? Marianne gets sad and tells Eusebia about her sister illness. She, she has the rigor. I have been looking for a cure everywhere, but... Suddenly she stops and apologizes to Eusebia. She said to Eusebia, I beg your majesty's forgiveness. That was inappropriate of me. Eusebia replied, that's all right, Marianne. She holds Marianne's arms and said, this is precisely why I called you here. To get to know you better. She tells Marianne, I see you attending to my needs every day, but I don't even know who you really are. Eusebia said, which is far from ideal, given the part you play in my private life. She with a smile on her face said, I hope it's not too late for us to try and get along with each other. Marianne said, Madam. Meanwhile, Eusebia thoughts, I had interpreted Marianne's cold demeanor as prejudice against a foreigner. Without realizing that I was the one jumping to conclusions, things would not have come to this had I been more attentive to those in my service. She said in her mind, I thought I'd learned enough not to repeat the mistakes of my previous life, but it seems I still haven't broken free from that habit hiding from people without taking the time to understand them. And that has to change because I am no longer a naive princess who died spending her whole life stuck in a shadowy corner. I am now an empress whose duty is to observe and guide the people of this nation. Eusebia said to Marianne, Not to worry, Marianne. I will find a way to help your sister. Marianne gets confused and said, Your majesty should not be concerned with such trivialities. Eusebia grabs Marianne's hand. Holding her hand, she replied, Nonsense. Eusebia with a smile on her face said, You are my responsibility now. She said in her mind, It's time to stop running away. Hearing this Marianne gets shocked and confused. Eusebia said, I will do what I can to make a difference. Eusebia went to Kanach and seeing her he said, Eusebia? What brings you here? She replied, Well, you've been kind enough to visit me in my quarters. Tis only right that I do the same for you. She said, or am I interrupting something? Kanach stand from her chair. Aslan tries to say, Madam, this is an urgent dash. But Kanach pushed him back and said to Eusebia, No, not at all. He said, I was just wrapping up. Eusebia replied, Oh, perfect. She asked him, Would you like to join me for dinner then? Eusebia was invited by Kanach for a delicious dinner with him. It was a surprise for Eusebia. She does not have any idea about that dinner. Eusebia said, This must come as quite a surprise to you. Kanach said I did not expect you had agreed. I invited you out of the blue, after all. Kanach said to her that. The timing was ideal. It was nearly dinner anyway. Kanach said to Eusebia excitedly, I am glad you took the initiative. Eusebia feeling not good. She said, why my face feel hot? At this time her checks were blushing. Isabia's face became red. Now she said I feel bad for putting the cooks through extra work. Eusebia said they seem to have gone all out to prepare this for us. Kanach surprised for Eusebia's reaction and said, 
Really? But it's the usual fare. You see be a thought in her mid. Usual fare. At the next moment she rapidly said, Oh, I, I almost let slip that I tend to have quick dinners while reading in the library. Kanach said now I am starting to wonder what your day to looks like. He said it's good timing you came to me today, or I will not have noticed that you have not been taking proper care of yourself. You see be a thought in her mind that. There is still so much research left to do. The secret of the guardians. A course for the rigor. She thought we will eat together every day from on now. Oh? But you are a busy man. Distracting you from your work is the last thing I want. By giving her a slice of cake, Kanach said you are more important to me. Kanach said, I would not want to see you pass out from starving yourself. Kanach said here, Raspberry cake. Your favorite. You see be a thought so that's on your mind? Pardon? Kanach said well. There must be reason you wanted to see a busy man like me. You see be a thought in her mind that you can talk to me. She said it's about Marissa, the head servant. He said, I.S.E. That must have been quite a struggle for her. Eusebia said do you know her well? Kanach said, Of course. I was the one who brought her to work here. While sitting on dining table Eusebia asked to Kanach, Do you know her well? Kanach replied, Of course. I was the one who brought her to work here. He said, Marianne is a professional who's been officially trained in stewardship. Impeccable manners, meticulous attention to detail. No one else was more qualified for the position. I did notice her regular excursions outside the palace but never pride. I had no idea she was going through such tough times. He sighed and said, no one could possibly focus on work with a sister dying from the rigor. She said, which brings me to say, Kanach I would like to have her sister live in my manor here in the palace. That way, Marianne could take care of the girl without getting distracted from her duties. He asked her, why not send her to the palace hospital instead? He said, Simon and the other court physicians are planning to research the plague there. It has state-of-the-art facilities and is close to your apartments where Marianne works. She asked him, does that mean I have your permission? Kanach smiled and said, you are the empress. There is nothing you cannot have within the borders of this nation. She dazed and thought, nothing I cannot have. Kanach gets confused seeing her and asked her, Eusebia? She nervously replied, This really means a lot, Kanach. I can't even imagine how Marianne would fare without your help. Kanach said, I was merely adding on to your suggestion. He holds her hand and said to her, You should be giving the credit to yourself. She starts blushing. Eusebia said to Kanach, But yours is the better solution. Let's just say that we both did our parts. Kanach with a smile on his face said to Eusebia, that works. She eating her food thought, I don't know why I can't stop being nervous. I should finish this plate quickly and excuse myself. Kanach said, hmm? Eusebia? He tells her about crumb on her face saying, there's a crumb on your cheek. She said here? He moves towards her saying, no, not there. He reached her cheek and removed the crumb with his hand. After removing the crumb he said to her, here. She thanks her for his help saying, oh. Thank you? She seeing her closely thought, huh? She thought while blushing seeing Kanach so closely, it's as if he's. Kanach said to her, Eusebia. He getting close to her said, could it be? Meanwhile, Oslin interrupts shouting, your majesty. He was holding some documents and said, I've been looking for you everywhere. You need to take a look at this document he stops noticing them. He seeing them getting red asked, am I interrupting something? Kanach standing back said, Oslin, you never mind. You mentioned a document? Meanwhile she thoughts, just now. If I'm not mistaken, he was about to. Kanach interrupts saying, I thoroughly enjoyed your company today. While leaving he said to Eusebia, we should do this again. She asked, of course. 
Meanwhile she thoughts, what should I do? Being around Kanach gives me this strange feeling I can't explain. Changing scenes we saw Marianne comes to Eusebia and said to her, Am I understanding correctly, madam? My sister is to be treated at the palace hospital? Eusebia with a smile on her face replied, Yes. Eusebia stand from her chair and said, The emperor has given his permission as well. All that remains is to make the preparations to bring her here. Marianne gets confused and asked, But the palace hospital is reserved for imperial family and ministers of the court. People like me are not worthy. Eusebia comes near to her and said, People like you, what makes you say that? Marianne said, I'm a commoner, madam. I consider myself incredibly fortunate that His Majesty granted me an opportunity to work in the palace. But in the other parts of the world, it would be considered taboo for a lowborn such as myself to even touch the hem of the Empress's robe. Eusebia said to her, much less receive treatment in the palace hospital. As far as I'm aware, Marianne, Riadin is ruled based on merit, not birth. She holding Marianne's hands said, And since you have been an outstanding servant of the imperial household, it's only fitting that you are rewarded for your work. Eusebia holding her hands with a smile on her face said to Marianne, Besides, I would be a terrible empress were I to let myself and those in my service suffer because of pointless rules that help no one. Hearing this Marianne gets shocked and said, Your Majesty. Eusebia said to her, Just consider this a token of my friendship. I hope you'll not refuse it. Marianne remembers her sister's condition and recalls the moment when she was sitting with her crying and holding her hand. She said to Eusebia, To think, and then she starts crying while Eusebia was holding her hands. She with tears on her face said to Eusebia, that I allowed myself to be swayed against such a kind-hearted soul. Maria kneeled down and said, I must beg your majesty's forgive majesty's forgiveness. Eusebia said, No, Marianne, this isn't. Marianne starts crying and interrupts her saying, The truth is, I was approached discreetly by a certain man the other day. She hearing this gets confused. Marianne said while crying, He asked me to spy on madam in exchange for a cure for my sister and I found myself wavering, if only for a moment. I deserve the harshest of punishments for my disloyalty. Eusebia hugs her and said to her, You deserve no such thing. You only wanted to help your sister. Eusebia said to Marianne, Untested, loyalty is nothing. And you proved yours with remarkable fortitude even though your sister's life was at stake. Marianne said, But your majesty. Eusebia said, I will hear no more. The only thing you need to tell me is the identity of this conspirator. Marianne wiping her tears said to Eusebia, the man who approached me with that offer. Marianne tells her about the man saying, was one of the nobles who supported his majesty against the tyrant. Baron Edwin is his name. Eusebia said, Edwin? I don't believe I've heard of him before. Why, why did he want you to spy on me? Marianne replied, that I don't know, madam. But judging from his past actions, there is little doubt that this is a snake of a man. He had gone into hiding after gravely insulting the previous the previous emperor, and joined the revolution in a bid to turn the tables in his favor. That's how that pariah managed to return to court. Eusebia said, so he's not a true sympathizer but a cunning opportunist. Indeed. Baron Oslin, the revolution's greatest contributor, chose not to accept rewards to set an example and prevent other nobles from demanding titles. As a result, others such as Edwin who fought under His Majesty's banner failed to occupy higher positions within the court. They were compensated in land and gold, of course, but Baron Edwin squandered every single coin and now works among the rank and file of the imperial bureaucracy. Eusebia thought, Kanach's revolution was aimed at dismantling the caste system enjoyed by the privileged. It's no wonder that the nobility would feel unhappy about it. Eusebia asked Marianne, But what could spying on me possibly accomplish? I'm not even his political enemy. Marianne replied, This is precisely why you must remain on guard, your majesty. His motives are unknown. Eusebia thought, Baron Edwin said, We, in the memory of the flower, which means there are others behind him. Eusebia asked Marianne, which fiefdom was Edwin rewarded with? 
Marianne replied, it was somewhere around the northeastern reaches of the empire. His domain borders the land of the non-human races and the kingdom of Akea to the north. Eusebia hearing this gets shocked. She thoughts remembering the necklace Dietrich gives her, his fiefdom borders Arkeye? Then the other conspirator must be. Eusebia remembers the necklace Dietrich gives her, and she thoughts, how did I not realize it sooner? There's only one person in the world who'd go to such lengths to have me watched. She thoughts, Dietrich. He still hasn't let go of his suspicions about me. She clenched her hand while thinking about this. Seeing her, Marianne gets confused and said, Your Majesty. Eusebia said, Ah, yes. Thank you for sharing, Marianne. She replied, Always, Madam. Marianne tells her something she should have to give attention about saying, There is another thing I must bring to Your Majesty's attention. With your permission, I would like to approach the Baron again as a double agent. Eusebia asked, A double agent, you say? Marianne said, I'm aware your majesty does not intend to let this matter slide easily. An ophical investigation, however, will only alert the enemy and cover up any leads we might find about the mastermind. Marianne said, it is also too dangerous for you to act in person, your majesty. She said, that is where I may be assistance. I shall win the baron's trust by accepting his offer and find out who's been giving the orders. Hearing this Eusebia gets confused. She grabs Marianne's hand and said, This may put you in harm's way. Marianne replied, A risk I am prepared to bear. Marianne said, You have not only saved Edis's life, but also pardoned my disloyalty. Tis only because of your mercy that I have my life today, madam. It would be an honor to use it in your service. Marianne kneeled down and holding Eusebia's hand said to her, Please, do not deny me this chance. UCB experienced a sudden pang and said, Very well. Holding her hand, she said, You have my thanks, Marianne. After some time, UCB comes to garden. She founds the flower and turns towards it. She touches the flower and thought about Marianne's request. Tis only because of your mercy that I have my life today, madam. It would be an honor to use it in your service. She's sitting in garden next to the flower's thought, an honor is it. Meanwhile someone steps in and said, Eusebia. She hearing this turns back and found Kanach. She said, Kanach? He said, you seem deep in thought. She said to him, the flowers are in full bloom everywhere I go. She touches a flower and said, this particular specimen requires constant care until it can blossom. The gardeners have clearly been putting in a lot of work. Kanach said I hadn't noticed, but they really are pretty. She points her finger to a flower. She said to Kanach, Kanach? I asked Marianne to bring her sister to the palace. She's overjoyed that she can now take proper care of the girl. And when I gave her my hands, she clasped them tightly, very tightly. I can't really explain why, but I was scared to realize that I had finally gained her full trust and loyalty. I wasn't sure I deserved it. I mean, I did next to nothing, and... She seeing her hands said, I'm sorry. Perhaps I'm thinking too much. Kanach said every morning. I take this path to get to my office, but I never noticed how well these flowers were taken care of until today. He said, and I would have remained oblivious to the hard work of our gardeners if it weren't for you. Kanach said, same for Marianne's matter. I thought she was getting distracted from her duties lately, but I would never have bothered to look into her private life. He giving his hand to her said, it takes painful effort to put ourselves in other people's shoes and be aware of their needs. She holds her hand and Kanach said, I'm very proud of you for dedicating yourself to this impossible task. You are a born leader, Eusebia. You have what it takes to rule a nation. He with a smile on his face thanks her saying, Thank you for coming to Riadin, and to me. Kanach kissed her hand. She thoughts, Kanach's kindness never fails to remind me of what I'm hiding from him. The infertility of guardians and the accord I have with my brother. So long as these fatal secrets remain sealed behind my lips, I would never be able to call myself the empress of this nation. 
I may be living a life of deception, but I want to keep trying for those around me. She opens the drawer of her table to pull out the necklace. And thoughts, so I can guide and protect them just as Kanach said. She holds the necklace in her hand and it starts shining. A voice comes from necklace saying, Eusebia? She said, it's been quite a while, brother. Dietrich said, you never sent word. I was starting to think that they might have killed you, but it seems you managed to keep the emperor pleased somehow. Eusebia sitting on her chair said, I'm sorry for making you worry. Dietrich asked, so, how are you finding your new life in Riaden? She said, not as bad as we thought. Meanwhile, she thought, I shouldn't be putting too much burden on Marianne alone. I must do what I can to get more information. It will be less risky for her that way. For now, I need to see if it really was Dietrich who gave the orders to have me watched. I will butter him up if that's what it takes. She said, the emperor does not give his trust easily. My options are limited at the moment. Dietrich asked, is that so? Dietrich said, but he seems to have taken a liking to you, from what I hear. Eusebia stand from her chair and asked, what do you mean? Dietrich said, did you really think I'd send my beloved sister alone to that foreign land? We have a friend within the empire who works tirelessly to ensure your safety. Eusebia thoughts, as I suspected. Dietrich must have been the one pulling the strings behind Baron Edwin. She clenched the necklace and said, That's very reassuring to hear, brother. Might I have the name of this ally you speak of? It would help greatly to know who's on my side. Dietrich replied, No need to concern yourself with such things. You need only do as you are told. He said, The world of politics is no less dangerous than a battlefield for a woman. Listen to your brother, and all will be well. He said, but if you insist on helping, there is the small matter of the emperor's recent tax reform proposal. The reform would radically disrupt the status quo for the nobility. Yet strangely enough, those of old money among the aristocracy seem to be supporting it. Perhaps you can investigate what underhanded tricks the emperor has employed to rally them to his cause. We need to start sowing the seeds of discord between him and the nobility if we are to bring Riadin to its heel. Eusebia gets confused and shocked. She said, but these are the same people who joined the Emperor's revolution. There's no guarantee that we can shake their support. If we act rashly, our people will be the ones to pay the price. Dietrich said, a hasty assumption, dear sister. She replied, Dietrich, I'm only worried for our K.A. Dietrich clenched the necklace and said to her, Well, if it troubles you so, why don't you bring me your husband's weakness instead of letting your imagination run wild? Make use of what you have between your legs, if you must. She gets completely shocked hearing this. Dietrich said, I hope your loyalty to RKA is still burning bright within you. Oh, and don't be stranger. He clenched the necklace and said, Dear sister. He slams his hands on the table and said, Damn it curse it all. He smirks and said, that imbecile dares talk back to me? He clenched the necklace and she said, Dietrich, I'm only worried for our K.A. Dietrich said in his mind, are you now? Nonsense. All you want is to make your bed in a world where you are hailed a hero. That's why you were so eager to accept the savage's degrading marriage offer. He shouts in anger, a fight to the death is what you ought to have elected if you truly cared for your people. He said there's no loyalty. Traitors everywhere. Parasites who would rather see this kingdom fall. He sitting on his chair thought, Eusebia, my dear sister, you could not possibly imagine the things I had to do to protect this nation. I was only fourteen when I started ruling as a regent in the name of our pathetic father who chose to neglect his crown and subjects after our mother died. A boy regent with only a weak and ailing king to support him at court, could not command the loyalty of his vassals. Eusebia said Dietrich. She clutched his shirt and said Dietrich, I miss mother. Her eyes were full of tears. Dietrich thoughts, but even then I vowed to dedicate my life to protecting our family and kingdom, no matter the cost. I was prepared to give every last drop of blood in me to his this sacred calling. Until. He recalls the moment when Eusebia was awakened, Someone said, the princess has awakened. 
RKA has a guardian now. He was standing at door while someone said, at long last, after centuries of waiting, the Arjun Wood has not forsaken us. It's rather baffling that the crown prince was not chosen. A man said, it's probably a sign that Dietrich is unfit to rule. The goddess wishes to see UCB a crown instead. Hearing this, Dietrich gets shocked while standing at the door. Then he recalls the moment when he visited Eusebia after she was awakened. Eusebia said to her, I'm sorry, Dietrich. She said, I, I still feel sick. I'm not at my best at the moment, you understand, don't you? He smirks and said, of course. You must be exhausted. He said, until you betrayed me. Dietrich standing behind the window thought, Eusebia, you are the guardian of RKA. And yet you have not done a single thing to bring true progress to this stagnant nation. All you did was erect a wall around us to keep us caged in this dying land. These other fools are too blind to see that, with their incessant cries to put you on the throne. He places his hand on the window and said, See what RKA has become because of you. Meanwhile someone steps in saying, The moment draws near, your highness. A man wearing a black dress enters and said to him, Soon, the foul-blooded savage will be dragged before you, bound and humiliated, and you majesty shall be the hand of justice that delivers his death. He said, All the continent shall kneel and swear fealty at your feet. Dietrich said, Yes, very soon. He tauts, RKA must be rebuilt from the very foundations if she is to prosper. What his nation requires is not a guardian, but an ambition to see us rise as lords of this continent and I. He looks out from the window and thought, I will be the one to make it happen.